Vinyl Bob here. Welcome to Vinyl Finds on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. This is number 63. That's right, folks, number 63. Now, a few weeks ago, I found some really smoking jazz records. Miles Davis cooking, Miles Davis working, John Coltrane Soul Train, and John Coltrane Lush Life. Um, that really lit a fire in me to go out and find some more jazz records, which are not easy to find in my town. But I went out with a scorched earth policy. I was going to find some new jazz records, possibly some original prestige stuff, which is what I was focusing on, uh, primarily artists that I didn't have a lot of and I really wanted to hear. And, you know, if I found some other things in the process, that was great. Good news. I found some jazz. <clears throat> so let's get started. Coming in hot. Bam. Bill Evans, the Paris concert, edition one. Um, if you watch the videos, you know that I found edition two a while ago. Bill Evans, fantastic piano player. Um, you might know him from uh, his efforts on Kind of Blue with Miles Davis. But, uh, you know, really Bill Evans has just the most amazing touch, uh, harmonic sensibility, and his piano playing is always very beautiful. So, these are not expensive records. If you see the Paris concerts out there somewhere, make sure you get them because they're really, really good. Really good. <clears throat> Next, let's get into some guitar stuff. Guitar stuff. Barney Kessel, Stefan Grappelli. Uh, Barney Kessel, you know, ultimate beast on the guitar. Um, Grappelli, most known, um, mostly known for playing with Django Reinhardt. Um, they get into some jazz standards and some gypsy jazz on this. Uh, yeah, it's a fun listen. It's on this really cool Black Lion label. I love that label. It's really dope. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, I found this at a Peddler's Mall. Unexpectedly. There was nothing there. Unless you're into Ann Murray, Boots Randolph, or Herp Alpert. Anyway. Uh... Stand with that Barney Kessel vibe. Boom, here you go. Kessel, Kessel plays standards. He's doing some Ellington tunes, some Gershwin tunes. Uh, you know, he's got that hollow body going on. As you can see here on the front, he's got this Charlie Christian pickup right there in the front position. I mean, I love this stuff. Um, Barney Kessel, great jazz guitar player. I like to put these records on and just kind of chill out and listen to them. On contemporary, love this label. Love, you know, one of my favorite uh, records is um, Sonny Rollins' "Way Out, Way Out West," which is on contemporary. So, uh, I'm a big fan of the contemporary label. If you see those contemporaries, get them. Next, getting into some Riverside. Boom! The Cannonball Adderley Plus. This has got Nate on there as well, Wynton Kelly on piano. Um, typical Cannonball Adderley, a lot of unison lines going on and, um, you know, just blowing. It's, this is cool. Somebody ripped the price tag off here at one point, really irritated me. But <clears throat> uh, this is a pretty good record. You know, some people are kind of in and out on Cannonball because some of his records sound similar to one another. So, um... Yeah, this one is a pretty good record. On that uh, blue Riverside, uh, that's a that's a mono right there, blue mono. I stay with Cannonball, Cannonball and Nate here. This is um, the Cannonball Adderley Quintet in San Francisco, featuring Nate Adderley. This is also on the Blue Riverside label. More unison lines, more great playing by Cannonball. Uh, this is a dope record. If you don't have this, get this right away. Um, seriously, I paid like um, maybe $5 a piece for most of these records. So 
I was doing pretty good. Uh, this one was really clean. This is probably the weakest of the Cannonball Adderley records I got. Boom. Uh, African Waltz, Cannonball Adderley, and an orchestra. Eh, you know, it's okay. Uh, it's pretty cool. This is a stereo on the black. Riverside. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Really clean. All right, let's get into some funky stuff. Bam. Blackbird. Donald Bird. This is a funky record. Very cool looking cover. Unfortunately, this is on that blue, blue note label. I'll get an original at some point, but this one was really clean, so I grabbed it up. This thing is funky. I mean, a lot of Donald Bird stuff is pretty funky, but this one's really cool. There are some vocals on this record, so, you know, beware, but other than that, it's really good. It's really, really good. And the vocals aren't bad. Don't, you know, I'm not trying to disparage them too much. Uh, I grabbed this. Lou Donaldson, the Midnight Creeper. Uh, well, it's just Midnight Creeper, but uh, this is pretty cool. On that Blue Note label. Love the cover. And, um, you know, I just got in to listen to this. It's pretty good. George Benson is on here. He plays quite a bit. Excellent jazz guitar by Mr. Benson, who is a perfect master on the on the jazz guitar. Um, yeah, if you see this, this one's a little bit worn, but I paid like three bucks for it, and it was it's really good, so I grabbed it. Uh, a lot of people on the VC been showing this one lately, interestingly enough. Uh, extensions. McCoy Tyner. That's right. Um, uh, McCoy is on the piano, of course. Uh, Wayne Shorter on uh, sax. Uh, Alice Coltrane on harp. Uh, Ron Carter on the bass. And I believe it's um, Elvin Jones on the drums. Really, really, uh, you know, in that kind of, it's it's a bit outside sounding. Okay, most of it is. So it's it's in the tradition of, say, like a later Coltrane or something like that. Um, it's a pretty good record on Blue Note. Yeah, I found this one. I was really stoked about it. Really, really stoked about it. Getting back into some of this jazz guitar and some funky stuff. Uh, bam, Grant Green, Shades of Green on Blue Note. That's right, it's typical Grant Green, but just a little bit funkier. This is really good. I really, really like this. Grant Green in top form, shredding. Uh, he's killing on this. Um, uh, yeah, I found this one, and, and, um, you know, it was like, I don't know. I had to I had to negotiate on that. The dude thought it was like really super valuable and I was like, nah. I think I got it for six. Okay, now let's get into some of this prestige stuff that I've been after. <clears throat> Boom, the late show, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, um, recorded at Milton's Playhouse with Johnny Griffin and Junior Mance, right? This is on a blue, that dark blue prestige. You know, typical blues kind of sax here. R nice, a lot of space. This is a pretty good record. If you see it for, you know, five bucks, it's worth picking up. Now, I didn't have any Gene Ammon stuff in my collection. And I found a boatload of it, of course, because he has a huge discography. And, you know, he's kind of a blues sax player. A lot of people don't give him the credit I think he deserves. So... Um, I'm going to show some Gene Ammons records, uh, mono pressings on Prestige. Boom. The Happy Blues, Jim, uh, Gene Ammons, All-Stars, Prestige 7039. Mono. Yeah. Um, Uptight. On that original Prestige. Angel Eyes. Uh, this is, of course, on the dark label. Uh, it's a stereo. It's the early one. Jug. Just 
Prestige. Twist in the Jug. I really like this one. This one's really good. Um, this is actually a stereo, which can be, uh, which you will know that by the silver Prestige label as opposed to the yellow Fireworks label. Um, this is a really good record. This is really good. I really like that. Um, ja Brother Jack McDuff and Gene Ammons together here. This is on a fire yellow fireworks label as well. And last but not least, Gene Ammons' Bad Bossa Nova. I like this record so much. I got the mono and the stereo. Uh, this is a great record. And here you go. Here's the label. You know, a lot of, um, let's see, it's got Kenny Burrell on rhythm guitar, Buddy, Bucky Pizzarelli on uh, Spanish guitar, which is like a nylon string guitar, like a classical guitar, if you will. Uh, Hank Jones on piano, Oliver Jackson on percussion, Al Hayes on bongo, and Gene Ammons on the tenor sax. Now, the reason I like these prestige records from the later period is because you can really hear the Inglewood Cliffs studio. Um, you know, if you listen to the saxophone really closely, you can hear the reverb off of that Inglewood Cliffs room. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder, Rudy Van Gelder pretty much did all of these records as far as the engineering and, and uh, cutting of the records and things. Um, but on, in particular on this one, and a lot of these Gene Ammons records, uh, you can hear that Inglewood Cliff studio. You know, every time there's any empty space, you can hear the reverb off the sax, and it just sounds so wonderful. Because, uh, like, take this next record here, uh, Bags Groove by Miles Davis. This was recorded in Hackensack at Ree Van Gelder's dad's house. And though these records sound really good, uh, you know, it's just in someone's home and not a purpose-built studio like in Inglewood Cliffs. So, by the way, this is a smoking record. Sonny Rollins, Milt Jackson, Thelonious Monk, Horace Silver, Percy Heath, and Kenny Clark. This is a this is stacked up. Now, obviously, there's tons of vibraphone on this. So, if you're not into that, what are you gonna do? But the lineup is pretty deadly. Um, Miles, this is early on, very early. This is you know mid '50s stuff. So, I was glad to find this though. Uh, fireworks label there really good <clears throat> I found a few miles records actually this is a later period of miles record boom ESP oh yeah um, Wayne Shorter Miles Davis you know the deal uh, Herbie Hancock Ron Carter mm -hmm. beast, beast mode. mode yeah this is straight up beast mode and uh, yeah I love this record um I found this one at Half Price Books. Picked it up. This is uh, three bucks. Boom. Miles Davis at Carnegie Hall on that 2i Columbia. Great ship. Almost near mint, I would say. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Hank Mobley is uh, doing all of the uh, sax work on this. He sounds great. Um, they go through, uh, you know, Wynton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, uh, with Gil Evans and his 21 piece orchestra. They go through, you know, basically kind of a greatest hits of, of sorts uh, of the Gil Evans period and it's really good it's pretty good that's a nice record to put on and finishing up the jazz stack is this um, bam what's new Sonny Rollins that's right this is a bossa nova record ultimately I just love the cover it's like that classic Sonny Rollins look he's got the very short hair with the goatee and uh, the long goatee, if you will. And, you know, Sonny Rollins, just a legend among men. Still alive, still kicking ass. Um, this is a great record. Of course, you do have to like Bossa Nova, uh, which there was a period of jazz where everybody was kind of going that way. <laughs> but uh, this is one of those records. Really uh, pretty good. I like to put these on and just kind of uh, listen to them just out there, you know while I'm doing other things. If you can't tell, I've pretty much lost my voice. And, uh, <laughs> you
you know, I'm a little under the weather. I don't like to uh, admit that, but I am. Um, I've been putting up some uh, recording vlogs. We, uh, My band that I play with, Condors in the System, we are working on a new record. It's called Nothing Matters, Everything Matters. And um, we've been doing a little bit of a recording uh, vlog each week. They're pretty short little videos. And uh, we just finished the first song. It was an instrumental tune called Memento Mori. And uh, it's going good. It's going good. Check those out. I'll link it at the end of the video. Uh, if you haven't heard any of our music, uh, it can be found on all streaming platforms and um, on Bandcamp which I will link at the end of this video as well. Sitting here today with this old Telecaster. Yeah, you can see this baby in action. If you watch the video. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm out there looking for records. You know, this uh, jazz stack. You know, yeah, about six of them were Gene Hammonds, but it's a beastly stack, you know. Miles, Sonny Rollins, uh, Barney Kessel, Gene Ammons, Cannonball Adderley. I mean, no Coltrane, but what are you going to do? Um, it is what it is. I'm still out there just grabbing it up and uh, listening to it. And, you know, having a good time. That's what it's all about, right? So, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment down below. Until we meet again. That's right, folks. Bob out.